TLO, what's poppin'? <laughs> we are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, what's this behind me? This is the live channel. Links in the description. If you miss any lives, any good stuff will be said on here. Uh, we do got the Discord link in the description. Y'all know what a Discord is. If not, follow mine and figure out what it is. And we also got um, the Patreon. You know, anything that we can't react to on YouTube, we react to it on the Patreon. All right, all right, all right. Never in my life have I had a video that just started calling me in my head. I seen this when I first started reacting today. It was like 30 minutes in and then I only had... You know, it had just been posting, and it, it, ever since then, it's like, man, this video, I mean, I'm itching to do this. I was laying, I was chilling, I had just ate, I was honestly about to take a nap, but I was like, nah, I can't. I gotta do this, because once I take this nap, it's over with. <laughs> London gang culture to UK drill, a raw and honest interview with A1 from the Nine. Okay. I'm interested. The thumbnail was really got me. Shooters versus knifers or something. You, you know the worst part is when people get done for murder. Same. These boys ain't murderers, bro. Oh. A1 from the Nine Gang notoriety in the music industry and his raw greedy lyrics. However, his rising career came to an abrupt halt when he was deported from the UK for carrying a knife in 2018. He was subsequently charged with possession of a bladed article and served prison sentence before being deported back to his birth country of Germany. A1 de delves into the world of gang culture and sheds light on the gritty and often overlooked aspect of London's drill scene. Welcome to Taboo Room. They're idiots. <laughs> idiots, the right word for them. There should be a conviction that says idiocy. <laughs> Cause they're not murderers, bro, they're idiots. These people will stab a guy and pray for him. And then it's not dead. Taboos in Germany, Stuttgart, to England. But I was born in Germany, Stuttgart. Um, well, my parents gave birth to me in Stuttgart. They moved to England when I was about, what, seven, eight years old. And I've, I grew up in London ever since, isn't it? And how would you describe growing up in London? I say it's wild. I say. It's wild. It's a, it's a, it, do you know what I mean? It's what you make it, innit? But I just say it's wild. Yeah. And what was your education like growing up? It was good. Um, I went to Eldon Junior Primary School. Um, after Eldon Junior, I went to two secondary schools. I went to Bishop Stortford Secondary School. After Bishop Stortford, I went to Enfield Grammar Secondary School. So, like, yeah. I, uh, I really did enjoy enjoy going to school when I was younger. I enjoyed doing a lot of things when I was younger. Like I enjoyed school, yeah. I definitely enjoyed going to school still. What kind of grades did you leave with? Um, cool, let's just say, unlike a lot of like my friends, right? When they were at school, they didn't know what they wanted to become. They was just like, a lot of them had like football ambitions or like, um, all different types of ambitions. Like some wanted to become doctors, some others, but a lot of majority of them didn't actually know what they wanted to become. I, from a young age, always knew what I wanted to become. Anyone who knew me from as early as 12 would know A said he's going to be a rapper. Do you know what I mean? Like, so like, in terms of grades, I would say- Can he just drop a song too? Yeah. I'm very book smart. I mean, anybody with a, high IQ, be able to look at me and tell he's, he's book smart, he knows a lot, he's very intelligent. However, my behavior when I was young and the things that I was involved in didn't allow me to leave school with grades. I was kicked out in... Um... As many of you guys know, time is money. So who is going to set up my LLC? Yeah, nine. What for? 
stupidity. Um, how do I describe it? It was just like, just stupid. I hated school. At a certain point, like, because of the school I went to, I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? Moving from where I moved from, I went to a school in, the now, in Skokie. It's called Niles North. I hated it. Oh, my God. I was like, when I went there, I was like one of the first waves of black people that first hit the school that they didn't know what to do, that didn't come from a two-family two home, that didn't like male authority, that didn't have a father, they, they didn't know what to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So they just stopped throwing punishments at it was the, it was the correct, uh, you know. But you know, yeah, I hated that school. <laughs> Pity, random... Looking back at it now, we're a lot grown, but back then it was just school fights, like boys being boys, and and um, and yeah, it was a bit dumb. People fighting outside school, and then the word got back to to the school about the fight happening. Quite a long story short, I, I, I don't really, I really like to go into detail too much, but I'll say narrowly what it was about. It was like a fight was happening between two people that I knew. When I knew one of them, a knife was brought to this fight which I wasn't going to allow to be used. So I took the knife to ensure that only fists were used. During the commotion of the fight happening, police ran into the park, the scene of the fight where it was happening. And they obviously, when police come to a scene, they search everyone there. So obviously they found the knife. And then um, I was asked the question, does this knife belong to you? And I just, I said, yeah, it does. I didn't claim that it wasn't. And the worst thing about it was it actually wasn't. But it's just life. It's how it works. It's like, it's not how it works. That's the wrong thing to say, but it's like, it's life. Like growing up from it now, you look back at it, you feel a bit dumb about it, but it's life. Like you move on from it. But, um. Yeah, that's life. That's life in certain parts. <laughs> I don't know if he was even in the ends, but that, that's, that's life. <laughs> you had it on you, you couldn't trip. That's life. Never that. Nevertheless, this happened outside school. I played for the rugby team. I loved rugby. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually loved playing rugby. So, where it happened outside school, I was kind of hoping I could still maintain my school life and I wouldn't be kicked out of school. But just um, Enfield Grammar took it upon themselves to obviously remove me from the school at the time. You was in the grammar school? Yeah, I went to Enfield Grammar. It's a sports academy. But obviously, they removed me from the school at the time. Now, I could sit here and pretend like, oh, I didn't care about that, but I did. Like, those guys are my brothers, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, as much as people, you know, like, link me to the roads and the streets and this whole, from the nine and A1 and blah, 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 they, like, everyone just knows me as a cool person behind all that. Like, all those guys I went to school with, I went to an all-boys school, those guys are my brothers, man. Like, I genuinely lived for those people. I would wake up every day as a kid with the biggest smile on my face in the morning because I know I'm going to see my friends, like my, my brothers. So when I got kicked out of school, a lot of people will try and pretend and act cool. Like, yeah, I got kicked out of school, bro. I, I was burning, I was pissed off. I didn't want to get kicked out of school. Do you know what I mean? All right, tell me about the story that led you getting deported from the country. All right, cool. So when I was, when I was, um, when I was 17 years old, I was caught in possession of a kitchen knife, right? Um, Looking back at it now, you can't turn back time, but I wish it never happened. But it did happen. Um, I was 17 years old at the time. I was making music and I was getting way too much attention that I even knew how to deal with or handle. Like I was literally dropping a video and bam, half a mil, bam, a million views, bam, 1.6. And back then, like, now YouTube has changed, algorithms have changed, there's a lot of views being gotten on YouTube, but back then, a mil views was a big deal, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Still is now kind of thing, but it's like... It still is, yeah. Um, I was doing it at the age of like 15, 16, so I, I would drop a song like <laughs> it'll get six, uh, it'll get 1.4 1. 1. million views. I'll drop two illa with Trems and I'm 17, it'll get one point, it'll get, um, it'll, it's, that's on like three mil now, but back then it'll get like two million views. And as a young person at 16, you're getting all that attention. You don't know how to deal with it. And London is actually a scary place. You know why? Because all you see on the news is constant death. All you see on the news is, oh, that guy I used to see when he was younger, he's dead. 
that guy who um, you, um, with that with his daughter, he's dead. Um, that guy on um, who used to see when he used to go to youth club when he was about 12, 13 years old, or he's, he's dead, he's been stabbed. Oh, so it becomes almost like um, like an expectation to die, because you see it happens. London a lot like Chicago, my boy. I'm gonna be playing. That's how I be in Chicago. Like, dang, I was just with bro. He died. Like, man, we was just at the club, bro, dead. Yeah. Happened with so many people on the news and on, on the social media. That person's dead. It's, it's like, it's, it's like it's, it, just, it just keeps on going. So, like, when you're a musician, you, you hear it from all types of people. You hear everyone in your ear saying you're targeted now. Because the minute you get millions of views next to your name, you're no longer just a normal person. You're targeted. You're a target to individuals. You're a target to... Um, um, the public, because that's the reality about Everybody, it. People target will target too. you for this for this stuff because you make music. So like, here's how to make over 100 ad creatives in just minutes. Hey, Taboo, you ain't playing today. In a in in a, in a like in a place where people were dying and they weren't even rappers for nothing, right? And this is gang affiliated or not gang affiliated. Because one thing people like to always do, no offense, my, my, my opinion of it, I feel like racist people always like to paint the brush and just say, um, yeah, they're all gangsters, no. Majority of people dying from knife crime are not gang members at all. They're just being caught up in it. There's, there's, like, the, there's The whole knife crime thing on the streets of London is a plague. But I'm not going to sit here and say, um, I carry knives because I wanted to be the big bad wolf. I feel like every, everything bro saying... Like, coming from Chicago, you could substitute... Every time he say London, you could substitute Chicago. Every time he say knife, you can substitute gang. And it, and it, still, it, it still... It makes perfect sense. It's the same exact thing. I'll say what nobody else wants to say. I carried a knife because I was scared. Yeah. My parents gave birth to me in Germany. Do you know what I mean? Nobody carries knives there. <laughs> it's a totally different lifestyle. My parents... No cap. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, people, it's, people in Chicago say that. Hey, I carry a, I carry the, I carry the pipe because I'm, I ain't trying to die. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be caught it with it with, than without it. You know, I, I, I completely get where you're coming from with that one. Because in Chicago, they're not, there's no fighting. There's no one-on-ones. There's none of that. If you pull up expecting the throw these. That's a dumb way to die. I, like, you feel me? It, it ain't happening. Brought me to London when I was young. It's the reality. And the things that I was shown growing up here, to a degree, traumatized me. For a fact, you can't grow up in London and that guy who, you know, used to say hi to your mom, he's dead. And that guy, who was a good kid, he's dead. And that kid from your prep, I could name, I could, I could be sat here and name a long list of people who are either dead or in prison doing a long sentence. It's impossible to know and see all of that and not be traumatized to a degree. So I'll say what people don't want to admit. Majority of people who carry knives, people might sit there and put on this whole act like, yeah, I do it because I'm the big man and I want to scare man and shit. Bro, you're capping. You're scared. You're afraid. So what happened when you got caught with a knife tonight? Um, I was arrested with a knife. That's facts, though. Um, quite long to be short, I was, I was arrested outside, and then um, I, was, I was charged, I was taken to court. Man, let's go back. That's facts, though. People carry a pipe or a knife just, to, just, just for protection at, at a certain point. And you ask protection from what? From protection from what I see. It puts fear in you, so you gotta up, you gotta up a pole too. You gotta have one too. You can't let nobody get one up on you, even if you're not involved. That's how I be in the rack. Like you, you gotta. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's crazy. We had a court date, and then I was sentenced to two years. Now. The reason why that's actually a bit mad is because the normal sentence for knives ain't two years. And don't be giving that to people, bro. I could list at least five rappers right now. I don't even want to start calling names and bringing people into this. But like, for example, 
There's a few rappers I know, they've gone prison for knives recently. Even Jay Huss went prison for like his third knife or something like that. Listen to his music. Done like four months back to his career. Do you know what I mean? Like, I ain't gonna, I ain't even gonna mention this guy's name because I, I, I hate going on interviews and talk about you a lot. It's just, I'm not giving man free clout. But obviously, the one with a wonky head shape, you either know or you don't know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 50p, you know what I'm saying? Aye, the wonky head shape. My <sighs> man, he went jail as well, you know what I'm trying to say? He went jail for a knife. He done like three, four months. When I did it, I was 17. When these people did it, they were adults. They were 24, 26. Now, when I done it, I got two years. 17-year-old boy, I get caught with a knife, two years. When they did it, six do three. Six months do three, or, or three months do half, or four months do two, two months. So it's like, to me, it was just a bit weird. Like, why was I being picked on to that? Like, why? And the police force can say, yeah, we're just doing our job. But let's be realistic. Doing your job would have been giving me a six-month sentence and moving on. They targeted me in that moment in time because the trending topic for draw music at that moment in time was me. If you're looking at... Before the term OFB even existed, right? Yeah, they was trying to, they was trying to set an example for you. Or before T on even had a million views, it was A1 from the nine. Drill music, like real North London drill music. So police were just doing everything in their power to try and get rid of that. From music bands to, and that's the wrong thing. But the reality is like, we was make it, to me, drill music has always been a way out. I was just, yeah, I agree. I always say that that's the wrong thing to do. You put, you, you, an opportunity to get these people out the street would be to let them rap and make a better way for their family. You putting them, you taking them and making them have it to make, you, you, you redirecting them, cutting their music off, stopping their money, spinning them around, making them make a U-turn and having to go be on that block again. It never makes sense to me. I didn't make music to that. And the, to the police, it's like, oh, this is inciting violence. Absolute rubbish. Music was never to incite violence. Music was a way out. And that's how every musician will tell you the same thing. They make music because they see it as a legitimate income. We all have parents. Don't think they don't breathe down our necks and say, oh, you're doing... My parents are Nigerian. They, they be a man's ear saying, you're doing yo, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Make sure you have something to show for it, though. So I rap. Do you know what I mean? That's what it means to me anyways. Cool, so I, I, I was in prison, I done my sentence, um, kept my head down, my release date came. So I, I've all packed my bags, I'm excited. I'm thinking, yep, home time. I'm going home today, going to see my family, back to my career. And then they're like, yeah, you're not going home. I'm like, why am I not going home? They said, you were born in Germany. I said, so? I've grown up in England since I was what? Like, at this stage, I don't even speak German. My first language is English. Do I sound German to you? Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? But it's like, I understand being born there and, and being born in Stuttgart. But it's like, at that moment in time, it was a bit of an... So it was a case of you, you're, you've come to the end of your sentence and they've just told you you're going to Germany. Yeah, you're being deported to Germany. So, so wait, I'm pretty sure you have family there, but like, that, that's crazy. It was like, first you get a two year sentence, which is already harsh. Because I've just given you five examples of individuals and other musicians you've gotten, what, two months, three months, um, four do two, five do three. Two years and they deported you? They could have just deported you from the jump and left it at that. And then when it comes to me, it's two years. I do um, a year in prison. I think I'm going home. I don't go home. They keep me in prison for near enough another, an, an additional year on something they call immigration hold. So it's like at the end of your sentence, they tell you wherever country you're from, you're on immigration hold now. What so was going through your head at this stage? Was um, it all new? Yeah, to me it was a bit shocking. To me it was like, I'm calling my parents and saying, hold on a minute. Like, dad, what's happening? I mean... How old are you at the moment? I, 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 was, I just turned 19. Literally just turned 19 in prison this time. So I was, I was phoning my mum and dad just in panic mode saying, look, my release date's gone past. And this thing actually takes a huge toll on your mental health because you feel a bit like an animal. No other country around the world does that. And I mean that. You, I understand somebody doing, 
Like, do you know why it, def it defeats the purpose? Why it does take a toll on your mental health? Because it's like, you're basically saying, when I was in prison, I did my two years for what I did. You do the crime, you do the time, you serve it, and you should go home to your family or you go and um, try and rehabilitate, right? The whole deportation thing and the whole um, immigration old thing, do you know why it's so corrupt? They let rapists go home on their release date. So I've got to sit there and watch people who touch little children, pedophiles, and rapists go home on their release date. And I'm told that I'm not allowed to be released into the public because I'm too much of a risk to it. Lennar has a hot selection of homes for... Hey, man, when they want you behind them bars, man, they want you behind them. What did I do to you next? To a risk to it. So what did I do to you next? I was kept in attention. For a year, which literally drove my, my, my mental health probably to like, to the brink. Cause I was just sat in a cell thinking it's been this, a month past. My release date was a month ago. Two months have passed. My release date was a month ago. Three months have passed. My release date was a month ago. The more, most painful part of it all is as time goes past, you see more people go home. So that guy who shot someone, yo, I'm going home today, guys. That guy who stabbed three people, I'm going home today, guys. That guy with the firearms, yo, I'm going home today, guys. But, oh, sorry, you can't because you were born in Germany. And, and you know the, the biggest scam of it all? Is that what, what my parents pay tax for? Is that what, or oh, no offense, I pay tax for? A system that at the quickest opportunity turns around and treats me like I'm an outsider after growing up here? After going to primary school? It's not like, I can understand a country that in primary school said, hey, um, if you wasn't born here, stand to the left. And if, if you're British, stand on the right. Look at each other and point at each other and say, you have British rights and you have the rights of an outsider. That's not what I was taught in primary school. In primary school, I was taught you're all equal. You all have the same rights. I didn't carry knives because I'm a monster who came to England like Jeffrey Dahmer, I wanted to eat brains. The problem's here. People carry knives here to the point it scared me into doing it. And then, <laughs> and then instant that, and then, and then the, the, the fingers pointed at me for being 17 and being scared to walk the streets. I had millions of views. I was scared to die. It's the truth. Not because of no enemies or any of that rubbish. You die innocently. It won't even be the people that's, uh, London has a habit of killing people and it's the most random of deaths. It's, um, they had a row, um, road rage fight. That guy had a knife. He's dead. Um, it's the most random deaths ever. So imagine being a target and you rap. And no offense, rappers are targeted individuals. They die more than anything. Facts. <laughs> For the last five, maybe four or five years, they've been the top. Top, top tier. You're a rapper, you, your, your chances of, of perishing are going up. I remember back then, I dropped a, a song with Shoki. He was dead a week or two after. So now I'm thinking, bro, I just made a song with my man. Everyone's saying he's popping, now he's dead. So what can't that happen to me? If he can die, I'm getting all these views. What's to say they can't happen to me? So now I'm scared. So I'm thinking, I'm not gonna die. Now, I ain't no monster. I'm not carrying a knife with the intent to go out there and intimidate members of the public or be scary. That's the last thing I'll ever do. When I carried a knife when I was 17, nobody would even know I had a knife. I was still a respectful member of the public. I'd see people struggling to carry their shopping and still help. Knives only carried because I was scared. People don't admit it to themselves. They, they make out like, yeah, I'm the big, I ain't scared of no one. If you weren't scared of no one, you'd walk without a knife. <laughs> And so, hey, after they've, at any stage, we were saying you'll be going home at this day or you'll be released to this No, this I was day. deported. I was dragged on a plane in handcuffs, tied in, 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 restra in a restraint jacket on the back of a Ryanair flight, Damn. taken to Berlin. The staff walked me to the, walked me to the police station in Berlin and just ran off. And that was it. Like, did they let you plan, like, did they let you like get everything in order? Like, hey, let me contact some family for you to get you like, dang, that's deep. They just pulled up on a plane and let you out and sent you to the police station and it was over. 
I walked around the police, um, um, the, the airport in Berlin, didn't know where I was gonna sleep. I didn't speak German. So I got help from somebody who spoke English. <laughs> so it's a bit weird. You imagine being deported to a country and you have to speak English to survive there. So it's obviously, there's obviously a, something hugely wrong in a, in a system there that's not being looked at properly. But I walked around Germany. So, so they've just put you on a plane one way to Germany and now you're there and that's your life now? Literally, so they put me in handcuffs. How much money did you have on you at this point? Nothing. Just out of fresh out of prison, no money? Um, nothing, nothing. I think, I think they, nothing. I think they left me like, what was it like, I don't know, like, how much is it? Follows like under a hundred pounds or something so like that. So you're nineteen hundred pound. Over under under a hundred pound. Yep. And then um. Nowhere to sleep. Nowhere to sleep. I spoke to a guy at the airport and explained our situation to him. He didn't believe it. How did you bump into him? Um. Well, I was walking around the airport, looking like a madman with a sad face on. Like, wow. Like, where the hell am I gonna go? Where am I gonna sleep tonight? Like, reality hits you after like five, ten so minutes. Wait, they just they just let you off the flight and that was it. Jump back on they like they didn't have to go check in nowhere or halfway house nothing. First five minutes you're like, cool. They, I got the handcuffs off. I'm free. But where am I? <laughs> then you start to kind of like panic. Like what the hell am I doing here? So it's like I was walking around the station, just going in circles, and I, I bumped into this guy. He said, "I've seen you walk past a couple of times now. You all right?" And I was like, "I'm not all right. I don't know where I'm going today. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. I've been brought here by a bunch of um, guy um, guys with handcuffs." He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 19. He said, so where's your family? I said, they're in England. He said, how can they bring you here if your family's in England? I said, I, I don't know. That's they've just said I'm a risk to the public and they've brought me here. He said, um, so where are you going to sleep tonight? I said, I don't have a clue. Um, he worked at a festival called Fusion in Germany. It's the biggest techno festival in, um, in, in, in Europe. He said, I work at this festival. There's loads of um, tents and rooms. If you come along with me, I'll have a word with my, my, my boss. I'll explain my situation to you, to him, and see what he has to say. So he took me to like some, to some, he took me to a festival. I fell asleep in the car, which was dangerous. Do you know what I mean? Imagine me in an absolute street. Yeah, you moving, you moving peak, my boy. That's crazy. Are you mad? <laughs> Stranger at the age of 19 and dozing off in the back of the car. For all I know, they could have sold me on a black, on a black market or some shit. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, I don't know. I just, I was, I, was, I was tired at the time. So I fell asleep in the back of the, the car. When I woke up, I was at a festival. Um, there was loads of lights everywhere. Loads of people just, to be honest, just all high off drugs. Um, and then... He took me to the office. I spoke to, to his, his manager and I explained my situation. And, and I kind of said like, I make music, I rap. He said, yeah, you rap. Yeah, right. I said, yeah, I actually rap. I make music. He said, show me something then. So I showed him my video for Up, um, um, that, that, that song, Up Niggas Part 2, was on like one, I think it was like just an, over a mil views at the time. And he's like, wow, that's actually you. Like He's like, raw, like, you actually make music. I was like, yeah, I do. He's like, so... How'd you end up in a predicament like this then? I was, I was like, if I knew, I'd be able to, I'd tell you. So he kind of said, look, I'll help out. Um, and he did, he, he got me. It's crazy, your clout got you, got you help. Because if, if they ain't know who you was, it would have been like, ah, oh well. Like an artist room, like they had like a moving caravan with loads of rooms for the artists that I performed at the, at the festival. And they helped me get into one. And I stayed there for, um, Oh, the entire time of the festival. But the problem with festivals is this, there's no phone connection anywhere. So my mum was trying to reach me the whole time. And I wasn't at the festival enjoying myself. To me, it was a place to get my head down. Like, to me, it was a place to, to sleep. I didn't really do a festival, but like, I, st I had a place to stay at the festival. Um, festival was like five days. There's no reception anywhere at the festival. So my mum couldn't call me. Um, she was panicking the most, thinking, where the hell's my son? He's, in, he's, he's, he's been taken to Germany, and I don't know where the hell he is, but I wasn't ignoring her calls or anything along the lines. I was trying to call her every day, but it was just the whole location had no reception for some reason. I think they do that with festivals for some reason. But um, uh, Festivals are definitely dead zones. There's too many phones on there. 
Too many people trying to get on the same tower. It's over with. Once the festival was done, reality kicks in again. So it's like, I didn't really, I didn't even get to do a festival. Let's be realistic. I was walking around the whole thing sad and, and on my own. I was watching people have fun and just sitting alone. Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing. Um, but now festival's over. Everyone's going, packing up and going. So now it's like, I need a place to stay. So I've gone back to the city in Berlin and then my, my mum called me that night. So now my phone's got some connect, I'm got reception. So now my mum's contacted me on WhatsApp that night and said, um, How you got Plain and simple. Your business can't. You get me. Where are you, like, do you know what I mean? Kind of thing, like, what are you doing? And then, um, I remember just sitting there thinking, I want to tell my mum right now that I'm literally um, stressed out, don't know where the hell I'm going to sleep right now, but all that's going to do worry, is man. have her up the whole night and not sleeping at all. So I made up some fake story to her. I was like, yeah, I, was, I just said, um, mom, you know I'm nice. Like, I'm cool. Some girl I met, she really likes me. She wants me to stay with her. Um, I'm, um, she got a hotel room. I'm going to a hotel with her tonight. Don't worry about me, mom. I'll be right. She's like, are you sure you're going to the hotel with this girl? She's like, oh, mom's over there saying, saying, oh, I hope, I hope, like, she's, you know, mom's the type of woman to say, to be like, oh, God bless this woman. Do you know what I'm trying to say kind of thing? Yeah. Little does she know there is no woman. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I only said that because I didn't want her sat there crying her eyes out at night going, oh, my son. I know she's already crying about me being the in another country to her. But um, not knowing where I'm sleeping would, 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 would destroy you. I honestly, I, I can remember y'all was telling me he got deported. But I, we, I, me personally, I never knew the whole story. Y'all just told me he got deported and I was like, oh, he was on dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, the first thing that come to mind when you think somebody get deported, like, oh, damn, he was going crazy. He wasn't even doing, like, it, it was like, they made him serve two years and still deported him is crazy. Like, I think it's here, you either, it's either or. <laughs> Like if they if they convict you that you're gone, they're just gonna deport you. I don't think they make you serve the time and deport you at the end. If they've made that choice to deport, you're just gonna be gone. A bit more, so I just kind of took that one on the chin. But the reality of it is, I didn't actually have a place to sleep. I was outside. I was literally just outside. I was um. Yeah, just outside. Remember, I, I, I got caught with this knife when I was 17. Went to prison for it a few months after. And then um, come out of prison, a 19-year-old man in another country. I, I don't even know how to, like, I don't know where you, I don't know what you, where, like, I don't know where you start. I've never had benefits my whole life, so I don't know how it works. If that's, you... That's why that's important, man. For the, any of these artists out here, make your own channel. Make your own YouTube channel. Now, when, I, when I'm telling you this, because you, whoever you paying, you paying these, these, these channels to put your music up, which is fine because they have a platform that you can piggyback off them, boom. But make your own channel, bro. So once you get one video or, or two videos up and they're doing decent and you see an acceleration... Drop stuff on your own channel. <laughs> so that way you get every dime that's coming to you. You feel me? Where to go to get benefits if you... I don't know how to do all of that. Do you know what I mean? So I was, I was, I was really in a predicament where I, I, I've gone to prison for signing on as a child, come out 19 as an adult in a whole other country where I don't speak the language, and I was lost. I was like, where do I go? And even if I... Even if... I didn't even know where to go. I didn't even, I didn't even know where to get a shelter or anything along those lines. Because I just didn't speak the language. You couldn't even read a map out there. <laughs> in England, for example, it's as easy as that. You literally type in homeless on, on Google and some sort of information will come up. Do you know what I mean? But in Germany, I was just lost because I was like, I've come out of prison. I don't speak the language. What am I actually expected to do? Like, what am I meant to do here? How did you get back? Well... During the whole thing that was happening, there was, there was an appeal process that was paid for. My dad spent loads of money on a lawyer. My mum was like, I spent a lot of money on a, on a case as well. There's no point capping about it. 
we both did, the whole family did as a whole, do you know what I mean? Even down to my sister, do you know what I mean? Like, we all spent a lot of money on lawyers to try and keep me in the country. And um, the sad thing about it is this, right? They've got something called the hostile environment and it's, it's, it's lawyers are using it to make a killing right now because it's like where people are being treated so hostile and being thrown into these like, uncomfortable predicaments where they don't know what to do or they're rushing trying to... When, when, a human, when a human being's in problems, he looks for a solution, right? So they're rushing to these lawyers who are offering solutions at costs, but those aren't actual solutions. They're just taking money off people. So my family spent loads of money. I spent loads of money on different lawyers who pretended like they were fighting the case in my interest, but they're really not. And, um, they're just capitalizing. Pardon? They're capitalizing off your, 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 your problems. That's messed up. This case has it's gone on since 2017. It's still pending today. It's still ongoing now. So that, that seven years, 2017, what? No, six years. That's six years of, of, of living in limbo. Six years, I'm 24 now. My passport's been held by the Home Office for the last, what, three years? How did you get back though? So you were a bill? Um, you, I, Carlos, we saw, I done a, an interview in Berlin. And um, at the interview, I was kind of told by the, the person who did the interview, this isn't legal, bro. Like your whole family is in England, your mom, your dad, you lived there for m majority of your life. What are you doing here when you don't even speak the language and your whole family's over there? Like, it's a breach of your human right, your right to a family life. I didn't even know some of these things. I was 19. So I wrote a long email um, to the courts, basically saying, what do you guys want from me? Like, like, you're driving me to the brink of insanity here. Like, I'll be honest with you, when I wasn't around my family, I wanted to die. So I probably put that in writing. I said, you know what? You guys are driving me to the, to the point where I'll probably, I'll probably do something to myself and it's gonna be you, it's gonna be your fault. And how on earth could we pay for an appeal almost a year ago and I'm just stuck in another country, literally, rough sleeping and battling with certain things that I'm not supposed to? How's it taken a year to get a court date? Like, where it was from the very beginning was an attempt to basically just chuck me in another country and pretend like it weren't illegal. And I'll say why. I know the law like the back, like, He's when good. a human being's faced with certain things, you start to start. He can talk about this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's ongoing, right? Study the law. You don't look at me and think, oh, he's a little road man, draw rapper, so he doesn't know the law. It's on gov.co.uk. You literally go on the website on Google and read it up. I read up the law that affects me as a person. I can tell you that what's happening to me is illegal. Um, whilst in detention centers, you learn about reference cases and how they work. So what, what the courts normally do, they'll use the judgment for one person's case to know how to judge yours. It's called a reference case. Yeah. So I've read up on reference case after reference case after reference case to know like, I need to know the law. This, this affects me, my career, everything. So I need to know the law. And then I read up on a reference case of a male called Stravetsky. He's a male who broke into a woman's home battered her with his friend, left her with bruises and scars. So something less than what you did. All over her face and neck. And this oh, so something, something more than what you did. My bad. His is more than what you did. Yours is lighter in comparison to this. And was convicted of it. They tried to deport him. However, they couldn't because of public, because he's been in the country for a certain period of time. So he was protected from deportation. Now, my understanding of the word justice is that everything's fair. So if you take a scale, and on one side of the scale, you put all the convictions of Stravetsky, a man who broke into a woman's home, stabbed a man in the neck with a glass bottle, um, done fraud, and you took all my convictions, I got caught with a knife a few times when I was a little kid, right? Before I even turned 18, before I even became an adult. I didn't, I didn't get convicted of stabbing anyone. I didn't, I didn't get convicted of harming anybody, of actually hurting a person. I got convicted of possession. You put bo both our convictions on two sides of the scale. I am outweighed by far. Yet this man went to the Court of Appeal in England, won his appeal, right? That's not the only reference case. 
if I was to continue reading reference cases to your people who won their appeals, I'd, I'd be sat here the whole day and they've all got worse convictions than myself. No, that is. They were trying to set an example of you. It's clear. It's what it sounds like. It's, it's clearly what it sounds like. They were trying to make an example of you. Who you are, your stardom, where you came from, how you were making a living. No, they don't like that. And that's what's <laughs> happening now. So a case that should have ended in 2018 and 19, because it's, it's a question of, this guy got caught with a knife when he was 17 years old, before he even became an adult. Is he a risk? Does, he, does that deserve a deportation or not? And the, the logical answer to that is, if we're not deporting people, adults, grown adults, who are stabbing people in the neck. Are you single? Maybe you're divorced or new in town. It's time to... Then what are we doing pushing for deportation with him? But what's happening in my case is sabotage. They're looking at my YouTube views. Officers are looking at my YouTube views and it's burning their, 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 their insides. It's making them look at them like, we don't, want, we don't want this young man to succeed. We don't want him to be a success story. How can we stop him from being a success story? And that's what's really happening here. Don't tell me that you got caught with a knife at 17. That's why we're trying to deport you. But Skengdo done two months in prison and went back to his career. Jay Haas did three, went back to his career. Should I carry on? If I, was, if, I, if I spent the whole day naming rappers that have been caught with a knife and gone back to their career, we'd be here the whole day. I'm the only person that gets... That's true. A lot of y'all gonna be like, oh, is he dry snitching? No, he's not dry snitching. These are, these are factual things he's saying. He's not giving up no new info. This is factual stuff that he's saying. Cases that have already been tried and people have already done their time. There's this public record. You're right. It's nicked for a knife and gets sent out the country for it. Why? Because the police need to protect the public? No, it's sabotage. It's as simple as that. It's you make music, you've got a big chance of actually becoming someone. We hate it. We'd rather see you rotting in a cell. So if we can pull strings to try and sabotage you, yeah, we'll do it. Get out of the country. Get out. That's what's really happening. And then what happened with your appeal then? So my appeal is pending. It's still pending today. Then how did you get back to this, this man's 24, his appeal is still pending five years later? Come on now. Go ahead and drop that. In the UK? Because um, it's pending. So you could, you're still allowed? It's pending. So there, there's court dates and it still goes on and it still goes on. It's so pending. Could, after a week, so, so as soon as you got to Germany, could you have just flown back as well? Or did you have to appeal before you... I didn't know the laws. I probably could have. But I didn't know that. I don't know how the laws work. I was 19. So at that moment in time, I just thought, I've been sent here. I've been sent here. I don't think I can go back. I mean, why would they send me here if I could simply just book a flat right back? And what was life like when you got back? What was the reception like? Um, it, it was love. Everyone was happy to see me back. Well, the pain of it was, um, I'm a musician, right? Music is a very competitive industry, bro. Music is a revolving door. They will forget about you. <laughs> so it's like, imagine working your ass off to rise all the way to the top of the mountain and you just about get there and the police are like, no, nope, sabotage. We'll nick a hundred people this year for knives and just give them two months and three months. But you, because you rap and you've got a bit of no clout around your name, two years, and then we'll deport you because we want to sabotage and ruin you, right? So I was going through all of that. My enemies are making music. I don't even know why I call them enemies. I call them competition. They ain't enemies. I don't care about these people. We're not out to kill each other or hurt each other. They're musical competition. They make music. We make music, and. We tried to outdo each other. I don't want to see any of them dead. I don't think any of them want to see me dead. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's a form of art, but it's musical competition. So it's like, the right time will be my competitors are making music. They're rising to, the, to start it. They're signing deals with Relentless and Sony and all these big record labels. I'm sat in a cell. I'm, I'm sat in limbo going, oh my days. Listening to the radio while people who I know I've got the better music, better musical talent than are in a position that I could be in. Not because I, I don't have the ability to do it or the work drive, simply because I'm being held back intentionally by, no offense, like independent officers who, who've taken it upon themselves to try and sabotage me. And that's exactly what it is. 
Because I'm starting the radio listening to people that I know I can rap better than, and they're signing deals. And the, the music that you was making back then was drill. Yeah, it was drill music. Um, with drill music as well, why do you say there's? Why do you think there was such a stigma, a bad stigma around drill music? Can I be realistic with you? Yes. I feel like. The, I feel like anything black people come up with will have a bad stigma around it. Anything that people of color are the main faces of the brand will have a bad, sti bad stigma around it. It's just how the world works. They done it with rap music, they done it with grime. The problem here isn't the music. People was rapping about knives and guns before drill even came about. I can go on YouTube now and show you videos from 2000 and, do you want me to, and, and five where people were rapping about knives, shanks, blah, blah, blah. It's not drill. That music's always been around. But I think it would be fair to say that with some drill, it, it can be very, very morbid. Well, demonic to, a, to an extent. Well, that's, that's, I can't tell you where that comes from. By definition, that's what drill is. <laughs> it's IRL. It's let me tell you this story in the most graphic way in the most real way that I can give it to you. Uh. Drill doesn't, these rappers are not going to the studio making this music because they're demonic people. And that's what sells, though. They're down to earth, most people anyways. The reason why they make music like that is because they all trying to outdo each other, right? You hear a track and it says some crazy lyrics in there. It gets views. The crazier the things you say, the more plays it's gonna get on Spotify. People are trying to succeed, man. They're seeing that guy drop music and say some outrageous stuff. So they're thinking, how can I outdo him? Let me say something yeah, even more serious. outrageous. Sometimes. But to the police, it's like, he said, what? That sounds mad. He said, what? The reality of it is, these people ain't monsters like they portray to be. There may be that small five percentage of morons just out here that trying to be trying their hardest to be monsters, but the majority of rappers I know in real life, they're down to earth people. Do you understand? Everyone's just trying to outdo everyone musically. So everyone's in the studio thinking, that guy said something crazy, let me say something crazier. Yeah. Because I was watching a few videos and it was almost like people would get points for people that have stabbed. <laughs> and the, the Check the skull. No, I was like, all right. Oh, man. Okay. It's, it's like... It's childish. What it is is this year, it's like... How do I describe it? It's not even that people are getting points for, for, for people they stabbed here. What it is is like... Um, cool. Put it this way. Someone's turned the streets of London into some dumb game. Knife game. Yeah, and every once in a while, everyone plays it and someone dies. And that's the sad reality about it. Right? Majority of fights could be sorted if people use their fist. However, nobody uses their fist. Right? And um, it's just as simple as that. Like, people have, do you know what I mean? It's just as simple as that. Like, there's a game going on on the streets of London. And it's not even a points. It's not even a points thing. It's nothing to do with the points. Like, forget points. It's just a game. Right? The whole carrying knives thing is a game. Because I'll be honest with you, do you think majority of people that have stabbed somebody and your dad wanted to kill him? Is that what you think? I know a lot of people, not proud of it, but I know a lot of people who unfortunately are spending a long time out of their life in prison. A long time out of their life in prison. And I speak to them. They ain't proud of it. If they could bring the person back to life now, they would. That's the facts of it. And I of course, in that moment, mug was be tough. They be wanting to do this, they be wanting to do that. As soon as you swing that mug and then nick an artery and you gone forever, it change up. That's majority. You go to anyone that's in prison doing Nobody that. Really wanna if you can bring that. it back to life, would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to anyone and ask. And I, like, I'll be honest with you, the whole. I mean, you know what the worst part is when people get done for murder? These boys ain't murderers, bro. They're idiots. <laughs> idiots, the right word for them. There should be a conviction that says idiocy. Because <laughs> they're not murderers, bro. They're idiots. These people will stab a guy and pray for him right after and say, God, please don't let him die. 
but then he does. And now you're doing a life sentence. And that's what's really going on in London. It's not, oh, I want to kill that guy, so I'm going to take a knife and stab him. Everyone's scared. So ain't nobody really on demon time out there. Ain't no real King Vimes out there is what you're saying. Which is nothing to be proud of, but I'm just saying as a comparison, ain't nobody really out there waking up with the sole purpose to go get their ops and make you check the scoreboard. I, okay, I can't I can't say that about Chicago, but I'm listening to what he's saying about London. Ed. Hey, well, what was your last song called? SES. What, what was that abbreviated for? Stabbers and Shooters. Why would you feel the need to call a song that? No, it's not. It's not to promote it. It's to talk about what we've come from, right? If you hear the lyrics in it, it goes, um, you talking tough because you think I'm a rapper. Boy, I'm a... Let me tell you what the truth is, yeah? It's more of a reflection of where I come from. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so confused about, um, like, the, like, a lot of people in the public, yeah? Because they will say things like, why has the song got such a negative title? Negativity sells. Period. <laughs> if you want to make your business stand out, let's... On the internet? Negativity sells and it gets views. And same with any 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 type of drama, anything. Negativity sells. It's just as simple as that. If we was to talk about any other rapper, and the, the rap scene is filled with rappers who portray a hood image that they don't even, a majority of rappers at the top, not even hood at all, but they put it on. Their videos are filled with guys with masks and blacked out, looking like they looking apart. Why? Why would a person who looks perfectly good, Pause. do you know what I mean, a, lives a good life, spoiled with their parents, go and chill in a hood around by people and film his videos there? Why? Because that's what sells. I can make a song saying, put down the guns, put down the knives, don't carry a knife. Well, don't. nobody gonna listen to that. I ain't even gonna hold you. I know where you're going with this. Nobody gonna listen to that though. Carry a gun. And in this business, you want listens and plays. Life would be a lot more fun. You think it's gonna sell? You think anyone's gonna buy it? He <laughs> said, put down the guns, life would be a little much more fun. Ah, bars. You think labels are gonna go, oh, this song's banging? No, the labels sign, no offense, the biggest, baddest wolf. That's how I seen it. When I was growing up and I, and, I, and I looked at my TV screens, they had 50 Cent on there. 50 Cent didn't rap about. True slime, big slime. <laughs> I'ma put down my gun and I'ma put down my, no, 50 Cent, no offense. You know what I'm saying? He laid the blueprint for what we do today. So I've never understood why people look at rappers today and say, why are they rapping about um, certain things and negativity? It sells. Oh, even, even for women, I don't know how to describe it. Have you seen the music industry for women? I know five, six female artists, right, who've been trying to get their music to pop for years, right, and they don't really pop like that. But you know what? They switch up their style, start dressing a bit more sexualized, you know, a bit more exposing, and now their music's popping. What does that tell you? Negativity sells. Those girls had talent. They didn't need to take their clothes off for you to see that they had talent. They had talent. But well, it took for them to have to be a bit more, let me take this off, for the public to say, cool, let me start looking now. Let me actually pay attention a bit more. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sex sells, negativity and drama sells. It's always been like that. Negativity sells. So I call the song SAS only because I didn't want to annoy the police. <laughs> and also because I'm, um, GRM didn't want to call it SAS, they call the, the title inflammatory, which I don't agree with. I feel like, I'll be honest, I just feel like that's sabotage, because I'll be honest, if I was an American and I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see a title called Stabbers and Shooters, I want to click on it. Even if I don't know who the artist is or what the song is, it's called Stabbers and Shooters for fuck's sake. Click. So that's another reason why I called it that, because I thought it's an act. I would have to say as an American, he is correct. I might go do a reaction to it right after this. I ain't even gonna hold you. Catching title, and it sounds so crazy, people will click on it. But it's in no shape or form glamorizing it. Like, I'm not here trying to say, yo, 
You want to? This is crazy, bro. It's not GRM D- Daily who who's saying this. You know what? They, they they're trying to get paid for the video. They can't put a title like that and get paid. I know who's saying it. The platform that this is on is saying it. You gotta understand they they that platform that this is on they running the business they do not care they want the, they don't even want the stuff on here they got people like Coco Melon and and, and 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 Ryan's toys catching billions of views they don't they will terminate your channel it's minimal to them to be a stabber and shooter no I got two little brothers they're nerds and I'm saying this because I know they're gonna watch it. And I want them to be nerds. <laughs> you understand? And it's not a bad thing to be a nerd. Like it's being, not. A, being a good kid who don't carry knives. It's not. It's cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I could go back in time, I would have done a lot of things differently. I would have partied a lot more and been a nerd too. What was you when I had to sleep in the park? But TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Very insightful.